right, we are here at the Regal booth at the Miami Boat Show. This is their all new, as it says right there, 38 fly. And uh, starting at the aft, they also like to point out, you can get this in a stern drive, just as this one is set up, or you could also get it in an outboard format, like their FXO 42 hiding out on that side. So I believe it's just called the FXO 38 when you get it with the outboards on this one. But uh, we're gonna step on board here. We're gonna have to work around some people and we're uh, somewhat limited on our access based on some signs that they have up on the boat. So we will adhere to their requests. But uh, anyways, immediately right there um, on the aft, uh, under the rear cockpit hides out a bunch of storage. They got fenders, they got life jackets all hanging out in there. So that's that's all fine and dandy. Everybody likes that. Um, over on this side, just another little uh, cubby that I'm struggling with with one hand. A uh, couple switches for a couple things in there. Um, so that's, that's what's hiding out there, down here television connection, water connection, shore power's coming in there, all that good stuff. Got a couple little stairs with these cool little LED blue accent lights going up that side there if you wanted to. Get up on the bow, we're gonna adhere to the signs, no bow access, so that will be off limits as well. And unfortunately, the engine compartment is gonna be a little bit uh, out of reach as well this time. Uh, but uh, anyways, gas would go there for that filth side. Uh, coming around here, again, those cool little blue LEDs going up the uh, staircase there into the rear cockpit. And this guy should be just a uh, shower that pulls out from there. And then we'll head up on into the uh, rear cockpit here in a second after these folks move out of the way. All right, so I made a liar out of myself and the fly bridge became available before the uh, cockpit so we are walking up onto the fly bridge of the 38th fly uh, immediately walking up forward we're greeted by these two large glass displays by garmin outfitted on this regal other great stuff like your vhf switches and all that jazz bow thruster you got your traditional throttles and of course you of course you have your uh joystick control for your volvo volvo penta drives there and then i guess i'll point out the uh, trim tab switch there as well but uh anyways we'll step up here there is this nice little uh seating area there with some cup holders um up here on top as you would expect with the flybridge excellent visibility literally we're just gonna do a little 360 action here all the way around so that's uh really cool to see um, we can't go on the bow, but you can see they have a little fold-up uh, bimini, if you will, there for the forward sun pad. And I would imagine there's some cup holders on either side or maybe down the middle in there as well. But uh, that's down there, and unfortunately we can't go there. Looking around this way, um, seating here, that bit there, it can stay in that position so that you're facing that way, or you can flip it back that way so you're facing... Um, forward if you're underway for instance and you want to want to look where you're going from the passenger seat but uh on this side there's a table stored under there there's just a miscellaneous storage back there and that table would clip right in that little spot and you have a nice little spot to enjoy some uh beverages or perhaps uh some hors d'oeuvres if you will if you want to get real fancy but uh that's what's going on up here on this flybridge and then my favorite part of it actually despite being such a small flybridge i know a lot of times even on bigger fly bridges, I've seen them up to mid 40 foot range, even close to 50, where they did not have a refrigerator up on the fly bridge. And honestly, I think that's a very, uh, very important part of keeping the party going up here on the fly bridge and uh, really getting the most out of the space up on top of the boat. So we're gonna head back down the stairs here in a second and uh, see what's going on down there. With any luck, the cockpit will be clear and even more luck the cabin will be clear we can really uh, get into the rest of this boat all right so now we're going to cut to our entry into the rear cockpit here and we're immediately greeted by this uh both outdoor and the indoor portion of the galley hanging out there so i think that's really awesome how they uh tie in both the rear cockpit and the interior portion of the cockpit there is a window that slides up and down there and that would uh close off the rear of the boat and if you wanted to you bring over the door from that side and your uh, cockpit would be uh, completely enclosed there and uh, you'd be able to take complete advantage of the climate control inside. 
So uh, coming over here, um, this is just, just cool. You uh, just grab up on that guy and it actually has a little strut, a uh, gas strut. So that's cool, just the little details like that for access to the uh, side deck there. And then as we come over here, just in our uh, outdoor galley area, on this side, Those are good ideas. that actually slides down in there like that. So that's really cool that that gets out of the way instead of just uh, hanging out in your way there for your grill. So we'll uh, put that back and struggle at it with one hand. Do have some standard 110 outlets there, a couple switches. That one, for instance, I don't know how well you can see it. That would put away the television that actually folds out of the ceiling here in the rear cockpit. So that's a really cool feature. And then again, waste basket there, instead of just being all loosey-goosey, that guy is hinged and uh, stays in place. And then around the corner there was the refrigerator. Uh, heading into the actual galley, if you will, um, up on top here, storage, microwave residing up there in that cabinet. Coming down here, that is your glass electric cooktop, also by Kenyon. On top pulls out your refrigerator. Below that would pull out your freezer. And then this first little spot is, of course, none other than your sink. And then just some storage and a waste basket down in that compartment. And then just some access to that space as well. I'll flip around. My camera's gonna freak out a little bit, my apologies. Again, cool little uh, James Bond style with the secret television that folds out. I like that. I do like this, uh, the ultra leather they have going on here. This white just looks real modern and clean with uh, the, the uh, light oak look there on the cabinetry. Uh, this guy folds out. There's just some access to a couple of things in there and below there is just some storage. Um, that is our helm. We'll look at that there momentarily. On this side, right now it's set up as a lounge area. As you can see, if you wanted to, you could uh, put yourself a dining table in there and make it a little dinette area. Um, on this side though, on our uh, Starboard side is an absolutely massive Garmin glass display. Don't know what the dimensions are offhand, but that thing's gotta be 24, 27 inches across. I'm not gonna pretend they know how to operate that, but uh, that's kind of the default home screen there. Um, very similar layout to the uh, Flybridge home. Uh, honestly, not that many more switches. The majority of them are really just your seat controls, your sunroof controls, and then stuff like your windshield wipers. Other than that, it's pretty much the same as it is up on top. Um, in addition, there is, I'm gonna struggle with it, but uh, there is your master uh, Fusion Audio head unit hunting behind that cover. Uh, steering wheel is tilt also. Same controls going along that side, the joystick and all that jazz. And then just a couple more things for the uh, big display there. Um, of course, there is a high-low bolster. Uh, very easy up and down, so that's nice. We're gonna flip around here, hop up in the helm, and take a look out. Um, if the uh, bimini over the front pad was not up, we would have an excellent view out standing up here at the helm. And I actually really like how high the, uh, you can't see it, but the uh, steering wheel is pretty much center of abdomen. Sometimes it gets real low, like waist height, and I'm just not a fan of that. So I love the, how high they have the wheel up on this, especially being 6'1", and if you're shorter, it's gonna be up even higher and kind of right there in your chest. Um, and we'll step back here. And uh, I guess we're gonna head down on in. Uh, so I really like what they did at the cabin on this thing. Uh, they're still carrying the ultra leather done in the white throughout the boat and the white uh, light oak finish as well. So that, I guess you would call your forward master or VIP, whichever you want to call it. Um, you do get the headroom in there versus the mid cabin. So I guess that's kind of a personal preference. Smaller bed than the mid cabin, but you get the headroom. So it's kind of a personal preference on if you make this your master or the mid cabin your master. Television tucked away in that wall. And what's cool with the layout here with the head, they have a split setup. So that side, your sink and your toilet reside there. And then if we flip around here, 180 degrees, that is the shower stall on that side. So you do have a dry head for your toilet compartment. And then in here, you have the uh, wet side. So it's got a cool little uh, half 
45 degree angle, so halfway to 90, uh, miniature rainfall shower head, if you will. I'm six foot one. Um, I've got I've got four inches above my head, so there's no problem with headroom in this thing. And then a uh, real quick hiding behind there is the master switch panel. Uh, so it kind of depends if you're running off of generator power or shore power, battery power, that all gets handled behind there. Uh, climate control hangs out there, and I'm gonna guess that's like lighting control and stuff would be on that uh, little screen there. Um, back there is the mid cabin, and like I said, it's kind of up to personal preference if you make that the VIP cabin or the master and vice versa for the forward berth. So we're gonna step down on it here. I get one step in and then I do have to duck under the molding to get down in here. Uh, nice little uh, sitting area here, sofa if you will. Uh, kind of like a, a night nightstand there. I guess it actually would be a nightstand considering the uh, these berths back here set up as a single twin berth about the size of a king bed right now. But this does split as you can see. That guy would scoot all the way over there and you would have uh, two single berths then. And then that would act as a nightstand like I mentioned and then just a little bit of storage in there. Um, flipping around here, uh, we do have another television hiding out, HVAC vent, and then a nice long side hall window there. And then there's just a little linen closet in that uh, near that corner there as well as a switch. So that is the uh, that is the little shebang down here in the cabin on this thing. And that's about all I got. Um, I will mention some storage on our way out to finish up this video. Two drawers there underneath the uh, forward berth. And then as we flip around this way, the stairs have storage on that step and a second step down as well. So we're gonna step back up on in here. And just cause this would, uh, this would flip out. I'm not gonna try to do this all one handed with a camera, but that would give you a platform to put your feet on or stand on while you're at the helm. Um, yeah, we're gonna make ourselves at home right up in here. All right, so that was Regal's new 38 fly here at the Miami Boat Show. This particular one was the Stern Drive model. I wish we could have got down the engine room to show you guys what that's going on down there. But uh, like I said, we got the restrictions for that as well as the barrier. So we missed a couple of the usual suspects that we like to check out. But uh, all around, I think this is a really cool boat. I love the layout down in the cabin with the split bathroom. Um, and then I just, the fly bridge, I think it's a really usable space for a 30 foot boat. I know these uh, mid to upper 30 fly bridges sometimes get just like the fly bridge is an afterthought. And they really made the flybridge like a focal point on this boat. So uh, kudos to Regal for uh, doing an all-around great job on this boat and just tying everything in here on the uh, cockpit level where I'm at now, uh, both the rear seating area and the galley. Just uh, tied together really nice. So uh, yeah, well done to Regal with this new 38 fly. Um, if I ever, for some reason, stumbled, stumbled upon a large sum of money, this isn't something I would uh, hesitate to check out myself. Down in the description, though, I will have information that will, uh, or uh, a link to information, rather, for more information about this boat, as well as some contact information to reach out to anybody at Regal if you got some more questions. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.